Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we're going to talk all about the tips and tricks that only pros know. So if you're a pro or you're not, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? First off, I am so sorry for the color of my face. If you're not watching on YouTube, it is very red, and you can see where I had my mask. I just got back uh, literally on a plane uh, about an hour ago. We landed, and I'm getting this episode recorded, so I apologize. Yes, I did not use sunscreen, so I'm sorry for that. Don't let that fool you, though. If this is your first time watching or listening to the podcast, make sure that you go back, follow up, love, and watch, listen, whatever, all the other episodes. We have like 200 episodes to catch up on. It's absolutely epic. It's been going on now for almost four solid years, which is beyond belief that I could still babble for that long. But go back, watch it. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. More importantly, if you are one of the cool kids, that means you watch every episode, you thumbs up on YouTube, you've left us a comment, but more importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug time. It is because of you that I get to go on lavish, lavish, non-sunscreen wearing vacations. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and you guys know uh, I go on like one vacation a year, so don't let that fool you. But either way, if you are one of the epic cool kids, you watch, do all that, you order through me, and of course you are subscribed to the American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Well, I don't have anything else to say to you guys. You are the most absolutely epic, top-tier people I could ever imagine. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's a magazine. It's amazing. It's all about window cleaning and the business side of it. It's American Window Cleaner Magazine. Plus, you get a super cool sticker sheet because why not? I love stickers. So, with all that being said, I have a couple shout-outs to actually give to. I want to say what's up to Levi Smith. Jay, the man. What up, Mr. Uh, Gam Camarero? Uh, Landon Smith, what's going on? And of course, Diego Garcia. D Diego Garcia, the Oso himself. What's up? Uh, truly, guys, if you want to put any orders in, please do let me know. I would love, love, love nothing more, especially it is busy season. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put my order in. I would love to do that for you. Uh, my number again, 862 312 2026. Some of those people that I just mentioned are some of the cool kids themselves. Maybe your name will be said aloud on a podcast that doesn't really matter. So, huh? Something to look forward to. <laughs> but either way, today we're talking about tips and tricks that only pros know. Now, let me start off by saying I don't, I wouldn't even call myself, oh, okay, I'm a pro. But I wouldn't consider myself a know-it-all. But I have a couple uh, tips that I really, really like. And some of them we've kind of maybe talked about a little bit. But some of them we haven't. And I always just assumed that it was like, you know, common knowledge. Common knowledge. But it's not. First off, trim your rubber. When you buy a rubber, trim your rubber. It's not even on the list. It's just one that came in my head. But trim your rubber. It's always going to be a little bit overlap. Cut it close so it's just overlapping. Use like the Ronin cutters. Uh, we sell those, of course, at windowcleaner.com. But uh, use Ronin. Anyway, stuff like that. Uh, the first one, and I know this because I just got done talking to somebody who didn't get a second brass clip in a channel they bought, and uh, I just threw it out there, and they're like, oh man, really? But it's only using one brass clip in a channel. Now, this is one of those things that people assume because they come with two, you leave two in, but you don't. If you leave two in, it forces the rubber to sit between the two pieces that lock it in. If you take one off, now the rubber just floats there and this piece stops it from falling out. That's it. Super, super simple. It's like if you have a clipless handle, right? The kind with the little teeth inside that you have to you know, let down on to hold. You usually have notches. If you flip your squeegee over, you can see notches in the channel. If there's notches, that is a channel made for a clipless uh, handle. That's the one with the little teeth. And then you don't use brass clips at all. I know a guy who was using a uh, 
a clipless channel with two brass clips. And uh, yeah, just having a whole lot of problems. By the way, if you ever are using something that in the rubber, it is like not on the glass right, or if you look at it, the rubber is kind of wavy, it's because you're using two brass clips. Now I know that in itself is not like a absolute amazing thing, but if you're using two and you switch to one, it's going to change your world because it just makes things so much easier. Uh, another quick one is that any wood cone or any cone tip, so we also call them taper tips, you could buy a wood cone, which is a wood cone that goes on the end of an extension pole, and you can buy a coned tip or taper tip pole. So if you buy an Ettore Reach or an uh, Unger OptiLock or uh, Mormon, any of those ones that have threads, but then it's also a taper, those tapers will work on any tool. I couldn't tell you. I do chat, by the way, if you guys ever are on um, windowcleaner.com. I'm on quite a bit for chat, especially at night. You'll always get me if it's uh, Sunday through Thursday. Um, but people ask all the time. They're like, hey, uh, I need to find squeegees that screw onto a pole. Now, I know if you're a window cleaner, you've found out there are no tools that, sque that screw onto a pole. The screw is there to use other things, but the screw is small enough that you can slide tools on. Now, a wood cone is just a universal tip for that. The only thing that happens when you mix brands is that they sometimes won't lock. Now, I know that the Unger and the Mormon say will lock together. There's actually two different buttons on a couple of the tools, but locking's not super important. And I'll tell you, I personally love a certain brand of pole and I don't use all that certain brand for my tools. So what I'll do is I'll take a screwdriver when I buy half dozen poles at a time and bend in that locking device just because it becomes a pain in the butt. So running it with just a tapered tip is totally fine. The only one that doesn't work, by the way, is a wood cone, which the wood cone is by Unger and it won't work on a ninja squeegee handle, which is absolutely beyond me. It actually uh, hits before it grips, like on the taper part. So the way to kind of litigate that if you are using a wood cone and you're using a um, uh, Ninja, just cut the wood cone. Take it down about two inches and you still have more than enough that goes into that pole or uh, into the handle and uh, now it doesn't knock. So uh, if you don't want to buy a new one, then just get the Ettore tipped pole and uh, there you go. And by the way, if you are using a uh, zero trad pole, it comes with, you can buy different uh, tips for it, Unger, Mormon, anyone that you want it to lock into, we have it. The one that it comes with is the wood cone on a standard Acme tip. Acme is the tip that's on like a painter's pole. Euro is the one that would be on a water fit pole. So something to look forward to, we already send you that. And if your wood cone starts to die, it's not gripping well, go over to a curb and just like scrape it up. All it needs is a little bit more. Eventually, the fibers in the wood get smoother. The more and more you keep slamming that thing down on, it kind of smooths it down. So you can use wood cones for a really, really long time. And yes, it is literally a cone of wood. So there's another uh, tip for you. Now, moving on to something else that is a little bit more I really haven't dove into as much because I'm not an accountant, I'm just some dude that happens to have a mic and a sunburn, um, is being an S-Corp. If you are a pro, you found out about S-Corp. If you are not filing your taxes as an S-Corp, I'm not saying you're not pro, I'm saying that there is something out there that you can save a bunch more money. Now, an S-Corp or an S-Corporation is the way that you file in taxes. You file your taxes that way. Now, if you're doing that, you have to pay yourself a standard wage for your job, right? But then every quarter, give or take, you can actually take disbursements more than that, I imagine, but talk to a tax advisor about that. But you can take disbursements. Now, a disbursement means that you can pay yourself on top of your wage, whatever that the company's making. In slow times, it's less. In busy times, it's more. You can keep more in the business. You can reinvest if you're in that season. You can do whatever you want with that. But a distribution is actually taxed way, way, way different than a standard payment. 
So something to think about is that S Corp. By the way, if you're not an LLC, if you're just a sole proprietor or you don't have any type of classification, look at doing that. An uh, LLC, limited liability corporation, right? That will remove you from being the business. Let me explain it. For those of you that I know already know what's up and uh, what this all is, I'm sorry. But for those of you who don't, being an LLC, which a lot of people have heard, basically creates a company that is owned in itself as a company. If you're a sole proprietor, Jersey's a sole proprietor of Jersey's window cleaning. If somebody gets hit on the head with a ladder or something, where I break a bunch of windows or scratch a bunch of stuff and they go to sue me, they can sue me for the business because the business is me, sole proprietor. If I am Jersey LLC and they try to sue my company, they can sue the company, but it doesn't necessarily translate directly to you. Now, of course, you know on all this, we need to be insured. We need all of the protection that we can. We need workers' comp. We need all of that to protect us as a company. But when things really, really hit the fan, if they ever do, you're protecting your family, your assets, your house, your car, your all of that from litigation when it comes to uh, somebody actually trying to take that. Not to say it's not possible. Because again, we have scratch glass waivers scratched glass waivers signed all the time and people can sidestep that if they really really want to right um but it's a sense of uh kind of separation an s corporation in the way that the filings happen is separate that's just the way that you're filing and paying yourself so when i pay myself i'm actually paying taxes on my wages uh i'm withholding And I'm filing that. What also allows it to happen is that now all of a sudden you're an employee of your company. So there's a lot of really cool benefits. So you can uh, start doing 401ks. You can start matching 401ks. If you're looking for ways to do deductions, S-Corp is really, really, really beneficial. So that's all I'm going to say on that because I'm just a dummy with a mic. But if you really love taxes, which none of us do, but if you were like, hey, I want to save like six to 12 plus thousand dollars a year. You can certainly check an S Corp. I'm telling you, when I switched over to an S Corporation, uh, it instantly saved me like eight thousand dollars a year in taxes. It's really a thing. So, um, look at it's all in the classification of how you file. So, definitely, definitely look that up. Another really cool tip that is probably one of my favorite tips on like, hey, how to clean a window kind of thing, is steel wool. Steel wool is on me at all times. All times. Now, steel wool and bronze wool, the same concept. Bronze wool is in fine classifications, right? So you have ultra fine is what we can use. Uh, But bronze wool itself is not going to rust like steel wool. Uh, But it does cost a little bit more. Steel wool, you have to run at 4-0, before you tell me anything about uh, how uh, three zero doesn't scratch or you've scratched with four zero or whatever, uh, I don't want to hear it, man. <laughs> uh, no, you can sometimes use three uh, steel wool. I know I have before on accident, um, but it's not recommended because you can scratch. You really can. It's all on that Hans scale, right? I think Hans. It's the the what's harder than what right diamond cutting a diamond kind of idea but four zero steel wool as long as there's no rust will not scratch glass and it's great for uh artillery fungus for fingerprints for bug butts just anything that's on the glass that you want a little bit more you may not pull out a razor for you just want a little buff it off it's gone dry in my opinion steel wool is awesome you'll even see people who will scrub a window with their strip washer They'll grab steel wool and they'll go over the whole thing. It'll be really, really bubbly and it means that they've hit everything. You can still see it and then they'll squeegee. That's another great way. But steel wool, if you don't have it on you, make sure you get some. You can buy literally like a 16 pack for like five bucks, six bucks, something like that. It's crazy. 
Uh, even rip them in half if you want to even use them a little bit longer. But the pouch, like the Etteray uh, scraper pouch, one of my personal favorites, has a second little flap that you could put steel wool. Uh, Sorbo has one with steel wool. There's a lot of them that have multiple pockets where you could put steel wool in those pockets. Don't put it in a regular like a hoodie pocket or something because the little fibers are like little slivers of metal that get stuck in your phone uh, speakers. I'm telling you, it is the most biggest pain in the butt when your phone speaker has metal dust in it. It's a pain in the butt. But awesome. You still will if you haven't already. And uh, the most controversial tip, hack, whatever you want to call it, in this entire show is right now. Now, before I say, there are times when a razor can scratch glass with debris being what actually scratches it. But a normal razor cannot scratch glass. It can scratch tint. It can scratch coatings. It can scratch that kind of stuff, but it will not scratch glass. The tip of our razors that we use are so fine that that is thinner and softer than glass. You cannot scratch glass that way. There's always debates on this and people go, I've scratched windows with something else was there. By the way, a tempered glass, tempering glass is even harder than regular glass. So as you would like, if you want to go ahead and put me on blast, go ahead and do that down below uh, if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, scrapers will not scratch glass, period. A rusted razor will. If you're gouging with the corner, it will. If there's tint, it will. It will scratch the tint. If you're taking mortar or something off of the glass and that is caught up and you're not cleaning your blade, that type of thing, that can scratch, but it's not the blade. So... A lot of times when there's people, especially guys that are getting into this new, they're scared to use a razor. Like, oh man, I got all this debris, what should I do? Use a razor. <laughs> no. What kind of chemical should I use? If you don't want to use a razor, that's fine, right? It's your company. You can do whatever you want or don't do whatever you want. But a razor will not scratch glass, just so you know. And by the way, it's called the razor, not a scraper. Scrapers use like scraping the glass and that just sounds bad. So call it a razor. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, tell me down below, A, if it really matters, but B, are you a window cleaner or a window washer? I don't think it really matters. Uh, I think that uh, we sometimes put ourselves on bigger pedestals than we should. Sometimes people are like, do I clean the windows? I don't wash it. I clean it. I don't know. I don't care either way. My company actually had the words window washing in it. And I got made fun of a lot whenever people heard my company. Like, washer? You're a window washer? Yeah, I wash the windows. Are you saying because you wash dishes, it doesn't mean the dishes are clean? I don't know. Tell me down below. One of my biggest pet peeves for some stinking reason. Uh, another tip that pros know that it takes some time for people who aren't pros is that huck towels are the absolute beast. They are the best towel that absolutely is in our industry. And a surgical towel is a huck towel. A huck towel is a surgical towel. They're the blue ones you see in operating rooms and shows like ER. We sell them at windowcleaner.com, but you can buy them absolutely anywhere. Now, there are some specialty towels out there, right? The squeegee lay towel is awesome. The fish scale is awesome. The uh, uh, scrim, people like that, fine. But the absolute best towel to have is not microfibers, it's not terry towels or terry cloths, you don't buy them at Sam's Club, you don't buy them at Costco, you buy surgical towels, recycled surgical towels. Now, on towels, huck towels again, new versus used, don't buy new. New, there is, they just don't absorb, the fibers haven't actually lose, the, the weave is not loosened up yet. Uh, so don't buy new. It does not help. You want old crusty ones. The crustier they get, the better they are. Uh, we unfortunately sell pretty good conditioned ones. So, um, you know, even after a couple washes, they get better and better, but you can buy them 10 pounds at a time. You're buying them 10 pounds at a time. Guess what? I don't care if I'm getting blood on it. I don't care if I'm blowing my nose. I don't care if I'm doing any of that stuff because it's such a cheap towel and it does great at 
sucking up water. It does great with not leaving lint. It details and it does sills. It does everything. Uh, Huck towels. If you haven't checked them out, call me and I'll, I'll hook you up with some. Uh, but they're awesome. You want to make sure to get them into an order if you haven't yet. Huck towels by far are the best. Another tip that I don't even say pros know. It's something that I've done and I absolutely tell everybody I possibly can about it. And it's hiring employees as temps or hiring through temp agencies. Now, if you can go out there, you put out the application, the resumes, you collect those, you do the interviews, you do all that, right? All of a sudden, Diego Garcia, one of the cool kids, he all of a sudden comes in, I interview him, he's awesome, he's what I've been looking for. I call up my dude, my dude's name's Tim, by the way, call him up, be like, Tim, I got a new guy starting on Monday, it's great, I'll be there at 8.30, work for you? Yep, cool. Tim comes in at 8.15 on Monday. Diego comes in at 8.30. I say, Tim, what's up? You know, we talk, we shoot the poop for a little bit. All of a sudden, Diego comes in. He goes, Diego, what's up, man? My name's Tim. They high five and they go into one of the offices and they talk shop. They're going to go over all the benefits. They're going to have the paperwork signed. They're going to say, hey, do you want medical, dental, term life, term disability, all of the coverages that I offer through that agency. They take care of all that for the low, low price of 37%. So that means every dollar I pay Diego, I'm paying the uh, temp agency 37 cents. That covers all of the medical, dental, term life, term disability, all of the perks on that side. It also covers your workers comp. It also covers your half of the taxes and everything else that's got to be paid. And the best part about all of that is that I don't have to have employee handbooks. So if there's somebody I just do not like, it just isn't fitting with my company, I don't have to step over eggshells and keep him on because there's no way I could fire him. He hasn't done anything wrong yet. I can just call the temp agency. And literally, if I'm too wussy to fire him, which don't ever do that. If you have to let somebody go, let them know. Like common courtesy, right? But I can call him up and say, hey, Tim, uh, no longer need Diego. That's it. Okay, great. I will, uh, is he notified or do I notify? I've notified him already. Done. That's it. And when the state calls and says, hey, this is the state of fill in the blank. Uh, we need to do an audit on your employees. We see you have this like large income coming in, uh, but yet no employees. We have to audit that. I say, I don't have employees. Like, well, not by your claim. No, no. I run temp agency. You have to call the temp agency. Here's their number. Oh, yeah, I don't hold employees. They hold them. So they go through all the audits. They go through all the whatever. So if there is a workers' comp claim or anything else, it falls onto that. It's absolutely amazing. If you haven't had your employees gone through, and a temp agency certainly do that, there are no downsides, in my opinion, either. Because in workers' comp, that percentage is going to be close to that 37% anyway. So super, super uh, good deal to do. And again, it doesn't affect anything if there is a claim or something happens. It's really, really awesome. The other side of that is, is that you do not have to have them. Because I've had people go, oh, yeah, no. If you, have a temp, if you have a temp, you have to hire them on in six months. No, that's not fact at all. Talk to the temp agency. They're the ones that will regulate that. And I've always had temp agencies that ran my employees that way forever. So you can talk to them about that. Hiring through temp agencies is a tip that pros know. Um, let's talk about the rain. If you're new and you're scared of the rain, or you think it's going to rain, do a rain guarantee. Do a seven-day rain guarantee. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I would just be giving work away. Wrong. Rain itself is clean. Rain is pure. Unless it hits something on the way down or you get acid rain or some weird, weird, weird thing. When you see rain drops on a window, it's not from the rain. If you see drops on a car and you could see after it rained, kind of like a light rain, there's that's not from the rain. What it is is the car was dirty, but it was uniformly dirty. You couldn't actually see the dirt until the rain condensed it into droplets and then it stayed on there if it was a heavy heavy rain when it dried you wouldn't see that because the dirt would have been washed off right so doing a rain guarantee protects you against people rescheduling that's it i've done a rain guarantee for 15 years and i'm telling you i have i've had 
one time a lady called me and she said, oh, it rained. I went over to her place and I said, I'm sorry, which windows were they that? Oh, no, no, none of them look bad. I just, I thought you redid the windows. No, no, I just, if they're dirty, I'll redo them. But if they're clean and there's nothing to do. Oh, I'm sorry. So I've never even really claimed one. Do a seven-day rain guarantee. It saves your scheduling. Scheduling is more important to have a full schedule because time is money, always. If you haven't figured that out, that is another tip that pros know. Time is money. So being more efficient, efficient is the fancy word for fast, right? If I can get a job done in one hour as opposed to two hours, I'm going to instantly make twice the money. So get your equipment up to par, get your skills up to par, have everything you need all the time because time is money. The more efficient you work, the more money you make telling you if you don't learn anything else in this whole thing that is one of them time is money time is money always 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 wrap your head around that everything is run towards efficiency right for a dollar or for a minute of your time needs to be paid in how many dollars you need to make it always has to be that way because if you do something in a certain setup and all of a sudden now there's five minutes you weren't getting paid for something that goes off your total and drops all your hourly every hour you were there drops by x amount even if it's a couple cents so time is money be as efficient as you can get into waterfed if you hate waterfed i'm not even going to talk any more about waterfed in this but get into waterfed it's absolutely amazing uh another one that pros know and newbies especially newbies do not know is that you're the professional now i know that some of you don't know what you're doing some of you are not confident in what you're doing some of you say man i just started all right i'm new in business here's the truth is you're the professional even if you've been doing this for an hour and now you got your first customer you're the professional don't question things you're doing right? Question it and change it for the next time, but things are fact when you say them. So if your price is your price, that's your price. If your process is your process, that's your process. If you have a seven day rain guarantee, tell them that. Be confident in what you have because you're the professional. They're hiring you based on the fact that you're the professional. So that is right there, a mindset that will change everything you do from here on out if you understand that you are the professional. Even if you're not confident, you're still the professional. If you bid something, and after that you're like, man, that sucked, I did not make the, I didn't make the money. You wouldn't go back and be like, hey, I messed up. Ah, just so you know, I'm not a professional. Just want to let you know. No, you change it for the next time. That's what being a professional is. All of us are still doing things. All of us are raising our prices. All of us are finding what goes faster and what takes longer. And some people are going, man, I hate wit- I hate gutter cleaning. Gutter cleaning takes me forever. I'm going to up it my minimum by 50 bucks. You can do that. It's your business, right? But understand that you're the professional changes your mindset. Uh, another one that this is kind of a, a, a fun one that people don't really know. Even if you're a professional, you may not know this. But rubber, squeegee rubber, is black. And it can only come in pieces. You cannot get a roll of rubber. You can't. What you're getting is silicone. If it comes in a roll, or it's bigger than, say, a 36-inch piece, which uh, actually... Uh, 40.5 inches is the longest piece that any manufacturer makes right now. And that's black diamond. But if you're getting something longer than that, so like a 50 foot roll or anything like that, that is silicone. Silicone can be extruded where rubber has to be pressed. It has to actually come out of a mold. So if you're getting big rolls, it is not rubber. And there's nothing wrong with that. Silicone works perfect, right? Silicone is softer, so you're going to see a lot of that like roll stuff softer. If you're getting something with colors in it, rubber can only be black. It can only be black. If it's anything else, it's a composite. So you have blue with Mormon, you have red with razor, you have green, Unger had green, you have all these different colors. A colored rubber is not rubber. 
a roll is not rubber. So just, you know, when you're finding what you like, if it's black and in a piece, it's more than likely rubber. So something to definitely check. If you like a soft, uh, you don't really like a hard and you want something softer than even soft, try a roll. Try some silicone, try some colored stuff. The fuel is good, may not last quite as long, but again, another one that's not in this, people always ask me, well, how long this stuff doesn't last very long. I change out of rubbers every single day. They flip. Every day they flip, every other day I replace them. So I don't know about long, long, uh, long lasting rubber because I've never wanted something to last long. Okay. Um, that's a big one on rubber. And another one, and this is probably, if the other one wasn't, the number one error people make that are not pros is that people do not buy based on price. They don't. There may be people out there who are only looking for the bare minimum. They're always looking for the cheapest. Okay, we'll say 98% of people aren't buying that way. Those 2%, you would really have to work hard to explain to them why. Because here's the thing. You know there's a McDonald's cheeseburger for a buck. But you also know that there's a steak restaurant cheeseburger and it costs $15. There are expensive grocery stores that sell the exact same groceries as the cheap ones. There are places that always have more expensive and always have less. You can buy a car that gets you from point A to point B, or you can buy a brand new Ferrari, right? You have to know what it is you're buying just like they do. They have to know what it is they're buying, otherwise price is the only thing they know. If I'm selling you two cars, and I didn't tell you anything about them, but two cars, one car was, you know, $1,000, and the other car was, you know, uh, $40,000. If you look at just those facts, the only thing you know about the cars is that one is the less. Then you're buying the less. So make sure to know people do not buy based on price. They base their purchasing decisions on if they like you, if they trust you, and more importantly, if what you're selling them is worth them buying. So keep that in mind. Uh, but I do definitely appreciate you guys uh, watching or listening. Uh, sorry again for the strawberry look, but you get what you get. Uh, this is a free podcast. You don't get to be picky. Just kidding. Uh, but if you do want to put in orders through me, I would genuinely appreciate that more than you know. My number is 862-312-2026. Please do uh, put orders in. Uh, call me, text me, whatever. I would love that. Nothing more. And by the way, if you're looking at the sticker board, every time we get the new sticker sheet in, stickers leak up there. Right now, there is a Yoda squeegee and a bunch of other stuff that's all in there. Secret. The newest sticker packs from American Window Cleaner Magazine are in there. This is the February one that is in mailboxes right now. Uh, if you want to order sticker sheets, you sure can. If you want to buy old subscriptions, you can. And if you want to buy a new subscription, go to AWC Mag dot com forward slash sub and be awesome get a subscription genuinely would appreciate that but either way until next week go out there and be epic